Okay, here we go again. Here is my PC build, and this time, instead of building it, we're going to upgrade it. Now, normally I wouldn't be upgrading this thing so quickly, but I was very fortunate enough to win a new motherboard and CPU from Asus. So I want to thank them for that. And I'm actually going to replace my old, which really isn't old, uh, Republic of Gamers Crosshair 4 Formula motherboard and my Phenom CPU. And I'm going to replace it with a Core i7 Sandy Bridge CPU and motherboard. Now, like I said, normally I wouldn't be doing this. Most of you have only recently seen this computer if you've been paying attention to my channel or if you're a subscriber to my channel. And I think I just finished posting the PC build uh, early this year, so about three months ago. But the, the build on this computer was completed in October of 2010. So I got about, I don't know, about six months of use out of this uh, motherboard and CPU. I might keep it and build another PC, or I might sell it. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. So what we're going to do in this series of videos of, of upgrading my PC build, I'm going to install a Sony multi-card reader and writer. And basically, if you've been paying attention to my channel, you saw the unboxing of this back in October, or at least it was filmed back in October. And because this case only has five and a quarter inch drive bays in the front of it, the card reader wouldn't fit in it. It requires a three and a half inch drive bay. And you can get converters, you can get bracket converters for that, which I have done, but I just haven't had the time to do that. So I'm going to, when I open this PC up, I'm going to install that. Also, I'm going to install a new drive on it, a main drive. And if you've seen one of my previous videos, you know that it's an SSD hard drive, 128 gigabyte hard drive that I'm going to install in this machine as the main drive to house Windows 7, the operating system, and all my important programs on there. I'm going to keep the 1.5 terabyte hard drive that I have in there right now as a data drive. So I'm going to keep all my data on that. But I'm going to keep all the programs on the SSD drive and that should up my performance and make load times a lot quicker. Also, as I alluded to earlier, I'm going to replace the motherboard and CPU. So basically, I have to take almost everything out of this machine and put it back in because the motherboard and the CPU is where everything connects. So why don't we get to it right now? Just loosen up these screws on the back here. Pull them out. And pull off the side panel here. Now I have a fan on the case here. I'm just going to remove that so I can remove the side panel here and get that out of the way. Now fortunately the power supply can stay and the drives can stay. Everything else however has got to come out. So we're going to start with the CPU cooler. Now, if you remember back to when I installed this, the screws are down here. Now, I'm going to be going from an AMD CPU to an Intel CPU, so the mounts are going to be different on it. So, if I can get back here, a tight fit back here. And let's pull the center fan out. And pulling the center fan out exposes the screws down here. Now this cooler came with its own little screwdriver tool. And it makes it easy to get down in the between the radiators here. And I'm just gonna loosen the screws so we can pull this so we can pull this off of the CPU. Now I'm gonna have to use different mounts on the back here because Intel and AMD have different mounting systems, so I'm going to have to replace that. Okay, the CPU cooler is off. CPU is still on the motherboard there. There are some Noctua brackets here that go with the CPU cooler, so I'm going to have to pull them off. I'll do that in a second. And I'm going to have to clean off 
the both the CPU and the CPU cooler. In this video, I'm probably only going to show you how to clean off the cooler, which I've done, you know, in previous videos too. It's very simple to do, but we'll do that later. Okay, the next thing I'm going to take out is the graphics card here. Might as well still use the, the Noctua tool here. And I'm just going to have to loosen up the mount here. And we're just going to slide the card right out. And there's two screws on this one. Okay, I got the screw out. And what I want to do is I want to dislodge it just like with RAM you have on one side of the PCI Express card slot. You just have a tab and you just want to push it down so you can open this up and pull the card right out. Okay, card sliding right out. And in this case, it's a tight fit. I might have to remove these cords off of it first. So let's see if we can pull this out. There we go. Okay. Slide it out, and then I will unplug the cords over here. And these are the power cords here. There we go. Graphics card out. Let's put that to the side. We're getting there. We're getting there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the motherboard from the power supply. Now there's two points on that. There's an 8-pin cord over here. Pull that out. And then there's a 24-pin over here. Okay. Let's push those to the side. Now we can access the RAM here. Now RAM is real easy. You just have tabs here, sometimes on both sides, sometimes on one side. And pull it right out. Let's get under there and pull it out. One last one. There we go. Now, I'm going to remove the CPU cooler brackets that are proprietary to the Noctua. Just put those to the side. There's a back plate behind the CPU that was attached to the bracket that I had there. Um, so it just, you know, it fell into the back. We'll retrieve that later. Uh, we're probably going to have to take the back of this off anyway. So the motherboard is almost clear of coming out. The only thing is, is that I have a USB bracket on the back here that's attached to the motherboard and I'm going to pull that out and then I'm going to unplug all of the SATA cords that plug into the drives here and then we should be able to remove the motherboard here. So why don't we start with this bracket here and let's pull that out it's attached to the motherboard in two spots. So let's undo those. There we go. Okay. Now there's a couple of places where the front of the case, the ports on the front of the case, attach to the motherboard. So we're just going to remove those. And of course, and right here is a power switch. LED lights, things like that. Unplug that. Okay, and the last thing we gotta do is just unplug the two drives here. The DVD drive and the hard drive. And then we've got one more, which is probably on the front of the case. Okay, the motherboard is ready to come out. Oh, I got one more here. That's probably a case fan here. There we go. Okay, motherboard is ready to come out. There are nine mounting points here. So we're just going to um, 
unscrew those. Six more to go. All right, three more to go here. All right, there we go. We got all the screws out and we're gonna lift the motherboard out gently and then pop out the IO shield and we're going to put the new motherboard in. There we go. There is the older motherboard, I'll call it, because it's not old. It's still an incredible motherboard, and I definitely recommend it if you're looking to build a machine. And like I said, i got to clean that CPU off. But that's for another time and not for this video. It's going to put this to the side and this is what I'm left with here. Now this is the back bracket to the motherboard there and I'll have to reattach that with the original face part that went with it. Alright now this is the new motherboard. 